Good day and welcome to the Abe 3411 Agricultural and Biosystems Power Engineering. In this video we will introduce the working principle of internal combustion engine or ICE. To begin with, I would like to ask this question again, which is more important. Is it power, or efficiency? Same as the BMW M1000 RR, or your girlfriend. But I think I will stay on my previous recommendation which is, study first before anything. The working principle of ICE, or internal combustion engine is that, combustion of fuel takes place inside the engine. Fuel is co-moosted in two ways inside the combustion chamber, the, rapid explosion of air fuel mixture, or igniting using spark, this is called spark ignition engines, or constant volume combustion CVC, and the other one is the slow burning of fuel when injected to the highly compressed heated air contained in the combustion chamber, this is called the compression ignition engine, or constant pressure combustion CPC because the pressure in the cylinder is almost constant. At this point I wish that everyone is not under pressure, and if you are under pressure then use spark or compression to let it go. There are three types of internal combustion engines, reciprocating engines, rotary engines, and continuous combustion engines. Just the same as girlfriends and boyfriends there are many types, the chilled out one, the classy one, the nerdy one, the gamer one, the witty sassy one, the food lover, the I don't care how I look one, and the texture one. My goodness. What I am saying. By the way, I'm the chilled out one but I'm not cold in fact I'm warm. Okay. Enough. What was the topic again? Ah okay. The types of internal combustion engines. The reciprocating engines, this engine uses pistons and cylinders as their combustion. The most common layout for reciprocating engines are two stroke engines and four stroke engines, but don't you know that there is a six stroke engine? This six stroke engine aims to improve the performance of the two and four stroke engines, but they are not widely used in engine design because of some major issues like bulky engine due to many numbers of cylinders and additional components, lesser brake power and indicated power per cycle, manufacturing cost, low mechanical efficiency due to additional moving parts, etc. Okay enough. For the six stroke engine so that we will not go to the eight stroke engine. Okay. Before we talked about the two stroke and four stroke engines, I would like to introduce the working principle of how internal combustion engine develops power inside its combustion chamber. So, let's make an analogy. Imagine that you are at a camping site. Your task is to make a boom fire. To make a fire you need three things, fuel, oxygen, and igniter. Same also with the internal combustion engine. It needs fuel, oxygen, and igniter. You need to prepare and arrange the fuel. You do not to worry the oxygen because it already available in your surrounding which you are already breathing some of it. After the preparation you can ignite the fuel using a igniter in this case a lighter, or matches, or in case you do not have this you can use friction to generate heat to start fire. The ability to make fire is one of the absolute most important and useful skills anyone can develop in the case of an emergency. Not only will it give your life-saving warmth in the cold of night, but you can use it to purify water, cook food, ward off predators, cauterize wounds, and even signal for help. Ideally, you'll have a lighter or matches on your person in the case of an emergency, but you should also be able to start a fire from scratch, just in case. Because unless you carry an ignition source on you at all times, you could easily be caught in a survival situation without one. Here are some tips to get you started the drier the better. It doesn't matter how skillful you are with a bow drill, magnifying glass, or flint and steel if your fuel, e.g. wood, brush, twigs, sticks, etc., is too wet slash hydrated. Rather than pulling branches off of living trees or grabbing anything that looks even remotely green, seek out dry, cracked, dead branches off the ground. Same goes for your kindling. Dry dead grass works 10x better than freshly plucked greenery and will save you both time and energy. The only time you want to use any kind of green vegetation on a fire is if you are trying to create smoke signals. And even then, you want to get a good fire going with dry wood first and then cook the greenery above it. Start small. The smaller the fibers of whatever it is you are trying to burn, the easier it will be to get them lit. You can start a raging bonfire with just a few smoky sparks and a handful of dead grass if you cook the flames properly. Don't bother trying to light even medium-sized branches, as it will likely be a waste of time, fuel, and precious energy. In fact, you are probably better off lighting your kindling outside of your main stack of wood and then gently moving it beneath your larger branches once you've got a small flame going. Remember, even a single spark can make all the difference. Be patient, be gentle, and you'll have a flame in no time. Be creative, matches, lighters, and friction aren't the only way to start a fire. Sure, they're probably the easiest, but if you've got creativity you can pull a MacGyver and figure out other ways to make a flame. Burning ants with a magnifying glass is a cruel childhood trick, but it's also a useful skill later on in life. If you've got glasses, you can focus light from the sun into a concentrated beam and easily ignite your tinder. That same tactic can be applied to clear ice, if you're in a cold climate. Okay enough for surviving skill. Let go back to how internal combustion engine produce power. To produce power, you need also to prepare fuel and oxygen, 
This preparation includes the process of mixing the fuel and oxygen, air fuel mixture, putting inside the combustion chamber, or intake, increasing the pressure and temperature of the fuel mixture, or by compression, igniting the fuel and oxygen mixture or ignition, and removing the co-moosted fuel inside the combustion chamber, or exhaust. This process works in spark ignition engines, but in the case of the compression ignition engines, oxygen only will be entering the combustion chamber, or intake, the oxygen is compressed rising at pressure and temperature, or compression, then fuel is injected in the combustion chamber, because the compressed air has high temperature, the injected fuel will ignite, this is the reason it was called compression ignition engine, after ignition burned fuel is removed from the combustion chamber, or exhaust. Okay. Let's use the mixing of fuel, intake process, compression process, ignition, or power process, and exhaust process to explain the two-stroke and four-stroke engines. The two-stroke engine, it was called two strokes since it requires the piston to stroke in two times to produce power, one stroke is the piston is moving forward to the top dead center and the other stroke is the piston is moving backward to the bottom dead center. This engine is commonly used petrol or gasoline as fuel. Gasoline is then mixed with air using carburetors for older engines, and gasoline fuel injector for newer engines. As the piston is moved to the top dead center it creates a vacuum at the crankcase, this vacuum will suck the fuel mixture from the carburetors to the crankcase. When the piston will move back to the bottom dead center, it creates a positive pressure at the crankcase. Now. When the piston is at the bottom dead center the intake of the fuel mixture to the combustion chamber, and the exhaust of burned fuel from the combustion chamber occur simultaneously. The positive pressure will force the fuel mixture into the combustion chamber or intake process, this fuel mixture will force the burned fuel out of the combustion chamber or exhaust process. As the piston moves to the top dead center, the fuel mixture is compressed to increase its pressure and temperature, we can call this as a compression stroke. A park plug will ignite the compressed fuel mixture causing a sudden increase of high pressure inside the combustion chamber, pushing the piston to move back at the bottom dead center, we can call this as power stroke. Then the process will start again as the piston it at the bottom dead center. This mean that every time the piston is at the top dead center ignition or power will occur. The advantages of two strokes are, design is much simpler than four stroke engines because it does not use valves. It gives significant boost of power, can works in any orientation, and a good power to weight ratio. The disadvantages are, it wears faster due to lack of dedicated lubrication, fuel needs additional oil, low efficiency, produces more pollution compared to four-stroke engines. The four-stroke engine, requires four strokes of the piston to complete one cycle of power. Let's distribute the process to produce power to the four strokes of the piston. Let's call the first stroke as the intake stroke, the second stroke as compression stroke, the third stroke as power stroke, now the fourth stroke is the exhaust stroke. The four-stroke engine can be categorized into, auto cycle, diesel cycle, Atkinson cycle, and Miller cycle. The auto cycle, this cycle uses spark ignition engine and a petrol or gasoline as fuel. The intake stroke. When piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center the intake valve opens downward relative to the movement of the piston, as the piston moves to the bottom dead center vacuum is created in the cylinder above the piston. Due to this air fuel mixture is sucked inside the cylinder. When the piston is at the bottom dead center the intake valve is closed. The compression stroke. When piston starts moving from bottom dead center to top dead center, the air fuel mixture trapped inside the cylinder starts getting compressed, when, piston reaches near top dead center, the air fuel mixture get compressed. The power stroke. At the end of compression stroke, the compressed air fuel mixture is ignited using spark burning the compress mixture of air and fuel increasing the pressure rapidly which pushes the piston to the bottom dead center. The exhaust stroke. When piston starts moving to the top dead center after the power stroke, exhaust valve opens and burned mixture of fuel are let out. In this way complete cycle continues and engine keeps on running. The diesel engine, this cycle uses compression ignition engine and a diesel as fuel the process is the same as the auto cycle but there is a difference. The intake stroke. 
When piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center the intake valve opens downward relative to the movement of the piston, as the piston moves to the bottom dead center vacuum is created in the cylinder above the piston. Due to this air is sucked inside the cylinder. When the piston is at the bottom dead center the intake valve is closed. The compression stroke. When piston starts moving from bottom dead center to top dead center, the air trapped inside the cylinder starts getting compressed. When piston reaches near top dead center, the air compressed and the temperature is 650 to 800 degrees Celsius. The power stroke. At the end of compression stroke, diesel fuel is sprayed in atomized form to the compressed hot air. The atomized diesel fuel will ignite causing explosion increasing the pressure rapidly which pushes the piston to the bottom dead center. The exhaust stroke. When piston starts moving to the top dead center after the power stroke, exhaust valve opens and burned mixture of fuel are let out. In this way complete cycle continues and engine keeps on running. Some advantages of four-stroke engine are, engine is more resistant compared to two-strokes since it has a dedicated lubrication system, more efficient than two-stroke engines, and less pollution. This pollution is one of the main reasons why two-stroke engines are disappearing. For the Atkinson cycle and Miller cycle engine, this engine cycle still uses the four-stroke engine, they are only a variation in the valve timing to improve the efficiency of four-stroke engines. The Atkinson cycle is a variation of the auto cycle engine. The Atkinson cycle delays the intake valves closing to increase the expansion ratio compared to the compression ratio for better fuel efficiency. With the introduction of turbocharging, the Miller cycle introduces the concept of closing the intake valve before the piston reached bottom dead center. Of all your friends there is always someone that is weird, just like in the family there what we called a black ship. It also the same in the engine design there is a weird one and it called the rotary or the Wankel engine. The Wankel engine is also a type of internal combustion engine using an eccentric rotary design to convert pressure into rotating motion. It was developed by Felix Wankel in the 1950s. In this engine the crankshaft remained stationary in operation, with the entire crankcase and its attached cylinders rotating around it as a unit. This is very clever version of the auto cycle. I will not too much about this since they are already out of the market engine, but I will leave a link at the description for you to see how it works. Another type of internal combustion is a continuous combustion engine. An example of this engines are the turbine engines. The difference in design is obvious compared to piston and Wankel engine because it uses a turbine instead of piston or rotor, but on their use is not that obvious. An engine that uses two and four strokes is extremely responsive, fuel efficient at low outputs, and fast start up, same also with the Wankel engine as compared to a turbine engine. This makes the rotary and piston engine ideal for use in vehicles. Some people successfully power a car using turbine engine, still they are not ideal for car since they are less responsive, or sluggish at acceleration, while turbine engine are not ideal for cars, they are ideal for airplanes because, because they are superior to power to weight ratio compared to a piston engine, design is more reliable for continuous high outputs, works better than a naturally aspirated piston engine at high altitudes and cold temperatures, lightweight build, reliability and high altitude capability. Again, I will leave link at the description below to see how it works. I hope at the end of this video you will have an idea of internal combustion engine, types, and classification. As well as the different types of girlfriend and boyfriends, and how to get rid of being under pressure.